everybody, Tim Pepperth here with Thursday Night Live Fly Tying and Fly Fishing Board Rail Fitters, and we are here to tie the Zug Bug today. On this episode of Quick Tie, this is Season 5, Episode 5. Uh, we want to thank Rocky Mountain Sh Fly Shop for bringing you this Quick Tie. Um, as well, I want you to like and subscribe to this video. It helps us out a lot, and also if you click that little bell, it's going to let you know every single time we have a new video come out, which is also helpful for you. I'm going to be tying out of my Season 5 kit. It looks just like this. Don't forget, you can still head over to our website and pick one up today if you don't already have one. It's www.flyfishingboardover.com backslash TNLS5. You can grab yours there today, as well as the materials list for the fly I'm about to tie will also be up there on the website. Let's head on over to the vise and get started. Okay, so today we are tying this on a size 14 hook. It is a hook. Don't ask me which one because I have completely blanked at the moment, but that's okay. I'll make Dana find it while I'm doing something else. Anyways, this is the hook we're tying on. We are going to use some UTC uh, 70. I'm using this kind of bronzy brown color. Black would be just as, just as appropriate. Um, I'm just trying to kind of match my hackle feather. Oh, there it is coming in from the side, folks. We have a size 14. This is a Dairiki number 730. There you go. All right. I'm going to start my thread just behind the eye. I'm going to work a thread base down a little ways. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to remind you of something we need to do for this pattern. We need to leave a longer tag of line. So I'm going to pull off a little bit extra before I start this on here because we are actually going to use our thread to bind some materials down. So I'm going to take this back, leaving this big long tag. And just remember, don't trim it out because we are going to use it. So I'm going to get to about the hook bend and I'm going to set this aside. I always find it difficult to keep track of this. So I actually come in here with a little hair clamp and I'm going to clamp it to my vise over here so that I know where that thread is at all times. And it's out of my way. So the first material we're using, we're actually using two different types of peacock material. So you have these things called spears. Now, if you had a, if I had a full feather here, I could show you where we get these from. Um, but these are called spears. You can see they're a little bit, uh, they're super iridescent, but they kind of a little bit more pointed in how they come out. Um, and they kind of get a little bushy at the end. So they're kind of a unique material. Um, grab three to four of them out of your kit. This one here is three of them I'm gonna tie in. I want these, I just got to match up the tips so that the tips are equal in length. Once I have those equal, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to measure off of my hook shank. I want these to be roughly half of the hook shank in length, sticking out the back. I'm going to measure that, set that over to the side, switch hands, take a gathering wrap to gather them on top of the hook, take a few wraps forward, and then I'm going to spring my thread wraps back. The goal is to try to keep them right up on top and then have them secured all the way back to basically where that hook bend was and where I initially had left my thread. Now I'm going to work myself forward and secure those butts kind of down and then I'm just going to come trim them out at this point here. Okay. Just like so. So I should have my, my tail, my spears hanging out like that. Uh, I also have that thread there. haven't cut that yet so make sure you don't do that. Then I'm going to come in here with a piece of silver flash, silver tinsel. Um, pretty much anything silver here could work. If you were using silver wire, however, you wouldn't need to leave the thread behind. So maybe that's actually a step saver, but the original pattern just uses a piece of silver tinsel. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get that fixed. Doesn't really matter where in the hook shank, but my thread's up here. So I'm going to go ahead and do it right there and work my thread wraps back to that point. I'm going to cord up my thread just so it's, here we go, acting like I want it to. And then I'm going to bring my thread back forward to kind of just behind the bead like so. And I'm going to go over and I'm going to grab now another piece of peacock. This is just peacock curl, okay? Got nice peacock curl. Try to find a couple that look like they got some really nice plump, um, you know, the little micro barbules on them because that's what we're really going to be tying this pattern with and trying to make it look good. Um, I want to actually tie this in from the butts this time because I'm going to be tying it at the front, putting it to the to the back, using the thread to secure it. So I want the taper to look um, a little more natural. So I'm going to come in and trim out the very stem, um, the base of the stem, because it's not weak, but it doesn't have the, the what's the right word here, puffiest or most, most plump looking portion of the feather. Um, and then I want to tie this in just in front of the head or the eye of the fly. Okay. And then we're going to wrap it backwards. Just like that. Get that good and secure. Trim out any of that little bit of tag if I had any. Like so. I'm going to take a nice 
half hitch here. Remember that's just an overhand knot. All I'm doing that for is to get my thread out of the way. And now I'm going to wrap these two feathers or these uh, peacock curls together. Nice evenly spaced. Trying not to wrap on top of the previous wrap because I want to have this nice stand up um, of the material. That's kind of where we get our our shape on this fly from. We're already going to have to put two more materials through it which is going to bind some of those down. So just make sure you don't touch any of them as you go back. I'm going to take this right to the back of the fly. Now I'm going to reach in here and grab that thread that I left. Okay, so I got my thread. Make sure it's not tangled up in here. I'm tangled up in that tinsel. Okay, now I'm going to do a full wrap over to secure it. And then I'm going to wiggle it as I move forward so that it doesn't get trapped or doesn't trap any or too many of those little pieces of the peacock curl. Now this is almost acting like if you can imagine like in a woolly bugger how we take wire and bring it forward over top of a hackle feather. Very very similar idea. We're just using the thread because it's a much softer material that we're binding down. Um, but peacock curl is always a little bit fragile so we use this to make it a little stronger. Then I'm going to tie off that thread and now be careful when you trim it out. Make sure you trim out the right thread and not the one that you're still tying with. I'm going to take a few more thread wraps up here at the eye just to make sure I got this all locked in place. And now I can come in here and grab those two peacock curl stems that I have left over and get rid of those. Now they're out of the way. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one more half hitch here just to make this a little easier, keep my thread out of the way. I'm going to set this aside one more time. And now I'm going to bring this silver tinsel forward. Same, same idea what I just did with the thread. I want three to five wraps as I come forward. Now this is going to compress some of those materials and we actually want it to because this is what's going to give some segmentation and it's also going to give some flash to the center of the body. Just like that. One more to get up to the eye and then I'll secure it down. Just like that. Make sure the tinsel's not going anywhere and then I can trim it out. Now I'm going to run my thread back just a smidge because I'm going to create a little bit of room because we're going to tie in a soft hackle up here at the head and then we're also going to finish off with this little bit of a, a piece of a mallard flank that we put on the top as well. So in your kit you're going to see we have these nice small not meant to be super long barbules or anything, but we are going to pretty much be using that whole little feather. So let's just pull down any of the pieces that have white on them. That white plume on the bottom, we're going to get rid of. Any hackle feather here, guys, is going to work. Um, a soft hackle feather. Okay, just something that's got some, it's still pretty wide down at the base, but kind of soft and supple so that it can be actually wrapped around the hook shank. I'm going to tie this in from the butt end this time. <coughs> like so. Gonna get a thread wrap behind and front, behind and front. Okay, making sure that stem is very secure before I trim that out. Want to make sure that that is not going to go anywhere. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a pair of hackle pliers. This is an important step here because this is a very small feather. You want to come in here and grab just the very tip with the hackle feather and now we are going to start some wraps forward. Okay? And as I go forward, I'm pulling those pieces of the feather back down the fly so that I'm not stacking on top of them. Cuz I don't want to not have use of any of those hackle feathers. <laughs> as you can hear, my dog is unhappy with something. Pepper. Enough. There we go. Jason the cat in the house. All right, now I'm going to secure that off. So taking some thread wraps behind and front again, making sure that's not going to go anywhere. Okay, I'm going to pull all of those little pieces of the feather forward now so I don't lock any of them down forward. I can come in here and trim out that tiny little stem. Any of the pieces that went forward, I can also get rid of those. And then I'm going to come up here and kind of coax them to go down the edges of the fly. Okay, so you can see then it almost looks flat on top. 
That's what I want because I'm going to tie in one more material up here and that's going to be a small mallard flank. Okay, so you see we have just a couple of different ones here. Nothing special because we're actually not really going to use the feather itself per se, but I'm going to peel a bunch down so that I'm not using any of that fluff. And I want to be tying in kind of the, the top stem, top of the tip of the stem, because that's where it's a little bit softer and I'm going to get uh, the stem itself to stay in nice and tight. It's going to tie in long. It's going to look funny, but just bear with me. We'll fix it up. Okay, so I'm going to get my thread back just a smidge so I have space to tie this in. I'm going to lay that right on top and tying in basically right to where I left the peeled off portion. So just the bare stem is tying in itself. Take a few wraps to tie that in. Okay, I'm not going to put any wraps underneath that stem. I'm going to do a little bit of a secure thing here with my uh, UV resin at the end, or any resin for that matter. I'm going to slide my scissors up underneath the stem so it clears the eye out and trim it off. So then from the top, you're left with something that looks like that. Okay, now I'm going to do a quick whip finish here. If I can find what finish tool, there it is. And then just a little bit of resin. So I'm not going to go crazy with my whip finish because I don't need to. More than anything, I don't want to trap any of those tackle fibers. Trim that out. I'm going to trim that one little piece that's hanging forward. Now I'm going to grab my Solares Bone Dry. I like this stuff. It's super thin. It's going to soak right into the thread wraps. Kind of like a Sally Hansen's, just that this you can cure at the end and it dries really quick. Okay, so I like to reinforce it by putting just a small drop on top of there. And what that's going to do is it's going to bind that stem down to the materials underneath and it's going to keep it from wanting to go all over the place. So once I get that good and cured, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my scissors underneath and I'm going to cut this, lifting up the feather. I'm going to bring this in underneath and try to cut off this feather fairly close. I'm trying to leave just a little triangle that doesn't extend much past the hackle itself. Okay, so you can see that sits right up there. That just gives us that little bit of a white spot there. A little triangle, you know you got the right shape if you did it like that. And that is supposed to basically, the original uh, version of this was meant to look like a cased caddis. I think it does a pretty spectacular job of that as well as looking like a lot of other things tied in different sizes and, and, uh, and even colors. Okay, guys, this is the Zug Bug. Hope you were able to get through this one with me. This is definitely uh, an oldie, but a goodie. Keep this one in your box as well, as we are going to probably use it and catch some fish with it. My name is Tim Hepworth here with Fly Fishing Bobber Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. Please like and subscribe to this video. And we want to say thanks to Rocky Mountain Fly Shop one more time for this quick tie. Drop a comment in here if you're part of the replay squad, and we will maybe have a prize for you. All right, guys, take care.